Presidential Power By the time Lincoln took office in 1861, slavery had existed in North America for more than 200 years. When the United States declared independence from Britain in 1776, many of the founders of the country had owned slaves. Slaves and free African Americans had helped the United States fight for its freedom from Britain during the American Revolution. Sidebar on the bottom. Americans brought people from Africa to the United States and sold them as slaves. Lincoln took the oath of presidential office in front of the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. on March 4, 1861. Lincoln had always felt slavery was wrong. In the 1830s, he described it as an injustice. But as a former lawyer, Lincoln was also concerned with following the U.S. Constitution, the document listed the basic principles for the United States government. Most importantly, as president, Lincoln needed to think about the well-being of the country. Taking action. By the time Lincoln took office on March 4, 1861, seven states had left the Union. Side note, Union was pretty much the United States at this point. States that left the Union would join something known as the Confederates. The Confederacy and the, and the Union would battle in the Civil War. They became known as the Confederate States of America, or the Confederacy. On April 15, Lincoln ordered the Union to raise an army to fight the Confederacy. In response, four more southern states left the Union. Some people criticized Lincoln for gathering troops and making other preparations for battle without Congress's approval. The U.S. Constitution did not give the president the right to declare war. That's correct. Congress could declare war. The president could put the plan into action. But he kind of stepped over a step there. That was reserved for Congress. Lincoln defended his actions. He said they were not acts of war. He called the violence in the South a rebellion. The president had the power to put down rebellions without Congress's approval. They're kind of playing with the, Lincoln was kind of playing with the words there. It's not war who's saying it's a rebellion. If our president does have that authority to squash or put down a rebellion. I'm going to read the caption above. Slave states and free states. Supporters of slavery wanted to bring slavery into new territories. They wanted to bring slavery into new territories because if the new ones... That's why a lot of the Southern states, they would push for it. There was a battle between the Confederacy and the Union to add more territories to get them on their side. So therefore, when they were voting in Congress, if you had more free states, they would push against slavery. If you had more slavery-supporting states, they would push for slavery. So that's kind of one of the reasons why they would fight for states like in Missouri. They wanted Kansas and Nebraska to be added. Okay. On July 25th, 1861... Congress stated the reasons for the Civil War. It stated, it said the purpose of the fighting was to keep the Union together. It did not say the goal was to end slavery. This was an important point for the Union. Four slave states, Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware, were still part of the Union. They did not secede, they did not leave, although they were still slave states. If the U.S. government came out too strongly against slavery, some of these states might join the Confederacy. Lincoln knew the war would be much more difficult for the Union if this occurred. Again, Lincoln, being very crafty with his wording, the stated purpose was not to end slavery. Although that was one of the major reasons. He said it was to keep the Union together. And if he went out too strong against slavery, those four states, Maryland, Delaware, Missouri, and Kentucky, they would leave and join the Confederacy and really t put the advantage to the South. Lincoln took action to make sure the four slave states in the Union would not join the Confederacy. He gave the military the power to hold people who spoke out in favor of secession. Secession is to leave the Union. The Constitution promised citizens the right to a trial before they were put in prison. But Lincoln suspended this right. He also sent troops to control Baltimore, Maryland. Lincoln wanted to show the people of Maryland the strength of the Union. Some people thought Lincoln was taking too much power. 
But Lincoln argued some acts could become lawful if needed to preserve the country. Some did think Lincoln was going too forceful at this point, but he would argue that this was necessary to preserve our country. That we did have the right to a trial before you were sent to prison. If you had a charge with a crime, you had to go to a trial, a court. He suspended that right and quickly just charged them and put them in jail. Kind of like, uh, he, he considered talking of, tre- of secession kind of like a, a, a treason. Freedom and the War. On July 22nd, 1862, Lincoln met with his cabinet. His cabinet is his group of advisors. It's part of the executive branch. There's the president and then his, his crew. You know, he has his group of advisors that he will talk to about major decisions. Advise him. They kind of talk over together. So on July 22nd, 1862, Lincoln meets with his cabinet. He wanted to talk about his most extreme use of presidential power yet. He read a draft of the Emancipation Proclamation. It would give slaves freedom throughout the Confederacy. It would go into effect January 1, 1863. I'm going to add a video regarding the Emancipation Proclamation. Proclamation, just like the Proclamation of um, 1763, where the land was given to the Native Americans, Proclamation is is a clear and direct statement of something that is going to be done by the government. They're proclaiming, stating. To emancipate is to free. So uh, this is known as the freeing of the slaves. Lincoln believed freeing slaves would help the Union war effort. Slaves would become free as the Union army moved through the South. As this happened, the Confederacy would lose slaves who supported its armies and economy. The proclamation would also let African Americans fight for the Union army. Perhaps most importantly, it would change the way people thought of the war. Lincoln knew some European countries were thinking of backing the South, but these countries were against slavery. If the Union were against slavery, European support would swing North. These were key decisions. By trying to free the slaves, they would want to join their efforts towards the Union. And if they start now making it more about against slavery, some of the European countries who are against slavery would join the cause of the Union. The proclamation was made public in September 1862. Lincoln's cabinet and the public were divided about the plan. Some people, including Stanton, though it was, thought it was necessary to end the war. Others questioned whether the president had the power to free the slaves. This is going to go into a, uh, this is an uncomfortable way of looking at people, but this was how it was viewed at the time. Slaves were thought of as property. So some would argue, you can't go to my plantation and take my plow. You, you can't take my reaper out on the crops. So why can you take my slave? Slaves were thought of as property. Many people did not think the president had the power to take away people's property without payment. Lincoln went ahead with the plan. On January 1st, 1863, he made the Emancipation Proclamation official. He wrote that he acted by the virtue of the power invested as commander-in-chief. On January 1st, 1863, Lincoln officially issued the Emancipation Proclamation. The following is a section from his speech. 